On Sunday the 7th of May 2023, me and my dad travelled by car to the Beamish Museum. Located near Stanley in County Durham, the museum was established by Frank Atkinson. It opened to the public in 1972 and spans across approximately 350 acres of land. We attended the museum's Fairs Please event, which took place over the Coronation Bank holiday weekend, commemorating the coronation of King Charles III. We started with a ride aboard this Park Royal AEC Regent 5. The bus was new to Lockheed's East Kent in 1959 and we alighted in the 1900s town. The aim of Beamish is to preserve an example of everyday life in urban and rural North East England at the climax of industrialisation in the early 20th century. The museum boasts a mixture of original, replica and translocated buildings. They have a large collection of artefacts, working vehicles and equipment. This Albion dates from the 1920s, one of the earliest examples of a motor bus on display at the event. see part of a 1950s town that is currently under construction. Whilst in town we called in at the bakery for a quick snack, a sausage roll being the order of the day.
This is the 1950s street scene, which has a classic fish and chip shop, a cafe and a salon. Next, we paid a visit to the small railway. Unfortunately, there was no service operating, as the locomotive that works for shuttle is currently being overhauled. The station was originally built in 1867 to serve the town of Rowley, or is it Rowley, near Consett. It was the first building to be relocated to the museum and was unveiled in 1976 by poet and broadcaster Sir John Betjeman. Across the station lies the goods yard and goods shed the latter dating from 1850. The 1896 built signal box was also open, allowing us to view the non-operational lever frame. From a distance, Beamish's fairground with helter skelter, chair swing, and merry go round. Next, a look at the buses, many of which were visitors to the event. This Strachan bodied Leyland Panther was new to Sunderland Corporation in 1966. 53 were built and this example was acquired by the North East Bus Preservation Trust in 2018. Also from the same group is this Leyland National 2, 4710. Coincidentally, the group was holding the North East Bus and Coach Show at the Metro Centre in Gateshead the same weekend. This unique vehicle is a Renault TN6C. It was built in the 1930s and operated in Paris. Unusually, the bus has a rear platform entrance. Replacement started in 1960, with the last of these having been withdrawn by 1969. On the left, we have a Darlington Corporation 1965 built Daimler, whilst on the right, we have Sunderland Corporation No. 13. The bus is a 1947 built Crossley. This is a Leyland Tiger PS1. This is a Northern Counties built Dennis Lowline. It dates from 1958. Away from the buses, this is Sheffield Corporation 264. The tram was built in 1937, before being withdrawn and purchased for preservation by the Kreitz Tramway Museum in 1960. 264 is currently being overhauled, and once finished, work is set to start restoring Gateshead 52. The tram was new in 1901, retired in 1951, the tram was moved to somebody's garden before it was picked up for preservation. It has been at Beamish since 2012. Beamish is also destined to have operational trolley buses in the future, and here we have a Teesside Corporation example, and behind it another one from Newcastle. Here is the resident vintage fleet. 
On the right is a 1987 built replica of the Daimler D-Type from 1913. In the centre we have a rebuilt 1939 Leyland Cub and on the left is a replica 7 Laws bus. It was built in 2007 and along with the Cub it is fitted with a wheelchair lift. In this shot we have a 1952 Bedford KZ on the right. Sitting next to it is a 1951 Bedford SB. This is a Burlingham Crossley SD42. It was new in 1949 and restored by Wright Brothers coaches. In the garage we have an Albion and this 1957 built Leyland Olympian. Not to be confused with the double deck equivalents from the 1980s, this bus was new to Fishwicks and built with a Metro Camel Wyman body. Next, we take a look inside the 1950s farm. The farmhouse originated in Weirdale. It was donated to the museum and with the aid of 3D lasers, photography, notes and drawings, it was put back together in 2020. The farm also has its own livestock, including sheep, lambs, hens, turkeys and a pig. But the pig wasn't willing to be on camera. Inside you get a good impression of the living conditions. This is the 1900s Pitt Village, an interpretation of a settlement lived by miners and their families. It has a school and its own chapel as well. Sinker's bait cabin sells hot snacks and ice cream. I'm usually happy with just plain old vanilla. However, as there was none of that in stock, I tried the coal flavoured variant and to my surprise, it didn't taste like coal at all and was rather nice. Next up is the colliery, which boasts an impressive winding engine house. It's the sole survivor of the northern coal field. On occasion it steams up and blows an ominous whistle, which can be heard echoing through the museum. The colliery also has a small railway yard, and inside the shed was a line of small engines that are used on occasion at the museum. By far the most interesting engine is of course Coffee Pot No. 1. It was built in Teesside and dates from 1871. It used to work at the Betchworth Quarry in Surrey. It was preserved in the 1960s and was moved to Beamish in 1975 after it was sold to Frank Atkinson. Oh. 
a look inside of the engine house itself, and admittedly, the lighting isn't brilliant, but it gives a good idea of what it was like to work in. Next to the house is the heapstead, where men, ponies and tubs were lowered into the mines. After a walk through the woodland footpath, we find ourselves at Pockley Wagon Way. The Wagon Way has a replica of George and Robert Stevenson's locomotion. Unfortunately again, there was no trains running today, but let's not dwell on that fact and reflect upon the tranquillity.
Unless that's a, uh, a new thing done in the old stuff. Right behind the driver of Blackpool 31. The tram was built in 1901 and rebuilt in 1918. In 1934 the tram became part of the engineering fleet until it was restored in 1984. A few years ago the tram was overhauled at Blackpool again and is now a regular runner at Beamish. On the day of filming the trams ran clockwise from the main entrance whilst the buses ran anti-clockwise. An extended, non-commentary filled run of the circuit of Board 31 will be uploaded as a bonus video, so please feel free to subscribe if you wish to be notified of its upload and any future videos like this one. Next, a ride on Sunderland 31, a lovely bus to ride on with some classic gear grinding in operation.
After a pleasant musical interlude, here we see the horse-drawn trailers. And here are the stables where the resident horses are cared for. Here is the wheelchair lift in operation on the Cub. It's nice to see that the museum has touches like this to be inclusive and ensure that anybody who comes here has a good time. Overall we had a superb day out in Beamish the staff and volunteers were very pleasant, and the weather once again was better than expected.
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, pressing the like button would be much appreciated, and comments are welcome too. Thanks again for your viewership, and take care.